Welcome back to Anatomy on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In the next few videos, we're going to be talking about visual physiology. How do you perceive light? So how do your eyes work? Okay. And everything in this is going to be based on functions in the retina, which is the deepest layer of the eye. Remember that we have a fibrous tunic, which consists of the sclera and cornea. Then we have the vascular tunic, which contains the choroid. And then the neural tunic, which has a lot of neurons, as you can see. And that really is just the retina. Now we'll go to this image real quick, just for a minute. But when light enters your eye, it's going to go through the pupil, obviously. And it's going to go through to the back of the eye, and here's the retina. And so in doing so, in following that path, the light's going to have to pass through the cornea, the anterior chamber, the posterior chamber, the lens, and then through the vitreous chamber. And then finally, that light is going to strike the retina at the back of the eye, which you can see a little bit more macroscopically in this picture right here. And within the retina, we have three cell types. The first type is called the photoreceptor cells, or just photoreceptors, and these are the cells that initially detect the light. And there are two subtypes of photoreceptor cells, and those are rods and cones. We're going to have a separate video where we go over the major differences between these, but I'll just say this for now. Rods detect non-colored light, so non-color vision, just bright and dark, and cones detect color. Okay, C for cones, C for color. Then we also have bipolar cells, and then we have ganglion cells, which eventually become continuous with the optic nerve. These are the three major cell types. There's also a couple other cell types called amacrine cells and horizontal cells, and we're not going to get into these very much. Most anatomy courses don't, but they just exist pretty much to fine-tune and regulate the functions of these cell types, particularly bipolar cells and ganglion cells. Okay. Now, before we go any further, I want you to notice something. So we've got light that we mentioned was passing through the eye, okay, like this, in this direction, and then it strikes the retina. But what's interesting about the setup of this is it actually doesn't encounter the photoreceptors first. Actually, if we follow the passage of light, the photoreceptors are at the back of the eye. They're, they're actually, uh, we could say, superficial to the ganglion cells. So actually the light has to travel through the ganglion cells, and then through the bipolar cell layer, and then finally is able to make contact with the photoreceptors. But it's the photoreceptors that initially detect that light. And then the photoreceptors will have an effect on the bipolar cells, which will then in turn have effects on the ganglion cells. And we're going to look at that now in this slide. Okay, now to really understand what happens here, we have to understand what's happening in the dark. So imagine a situation where it is complete darkness, okay? So let's first of all say it's night, it's dark out. You're in your room, there's no night lights, doors are closed, and you have blackout curtains. So you can't see anything, all right? So I have the photoreceptor cells in blue. Now, interestingly, in the dark, the photoreceptor cells are actually depolarized, okay? So the photoreceptor cells are actually depolarized. Now that not may not... Now that probably doesn't make a lot of sense because usually when we think of depolarization, we think of activating. But trust me, this is how it is and it will make sense in the end. So in the dark, photoreceptor cells, rods and cones are depolarized. That being said, that means the photoreceptors are activated and they activate the next neuron in sequence, which is called a bipolar cell. Uh, it's also worth mentioning that the way that photoreceptors activate the bipolar cell is when they depolarize, they release the, the neurotransmitter glutamate, which we abbreviate GLU. Okay? So photoreceptors activated in the dark, they depolarized as a result, and activate the bipolar cell. Now, bipolar cells by nature are inhibitory cells okay it's a little bit more complicated than this because there is some interplay with amacrine cells but the basic idea is that by default if a bipolar cell is activated it will inhibit the ganglion cell okay if a bipolar cell is activated it will inhibit the ganglion cell all right and seeing as the ganglion cell, its axons become part of the optic nerve, if the ganglion cell is inhibited, then the optic nerve perceives no light. So let's regroup there for a second. In the dark, 
photoreceptor cells are depolarized, meaning they're activated. And so that means the photoreceptor cell activates the bipolar cell. And the bipolar cell being an inhibitory cell, if the bipolar cell is activated, then it's free to inhibit the ganglion cell. And then no light is perceived. Now we're going to switch gears. Now suddenly we flip a light switch on. Now we've got light. In the light, everything is opposite. Now the photoreceptor cell is hyperpolarized, which may not make a lot of sense, but trust me, this is how it works. The photoreceptor cell hyperpolarizes and therefore is inhibited. It does not release glutamate now. And so it does not activate the bipolar cell. And so therefore the bipolar cell is now inhibited. Now the bipolar cell normally, if activated, would inhibit the ganglion cell. But if the bipolar cell is inhibited, it can no longer inhibit the ganglion cell, and so by default, the ganglion cell becomes activated. And when the ganglion cell is activated, it transmits signals to the optic nerve, which allow you to perceive, yes, there is light. Okay, so let's do a brief recap here. In the dark, photoreceptor cells are depolarized and activated. That means they activate the bipolar cell. And since bipolar cells are inhibitory, an activated bipolar cell will inhibit the ganglion cell. And so, no light. In the light, the photoreceptor cell is inhibited or hyperpolarized, meaning it does not activate the bipolar cell, and so the bipolar cell is inhibited. And seeing as you're inhibiting the inhibition, a double negative, that by default means the ganglion cell will be activated and it will depolarize and send signals to the optic nerve indicating that you have light. So again, some of this stuff, particularly with the photoreceptor cell, seems backwards, but very important that you learn it this way. All right. So hopefully at this point you understand how these cells activate or inhibit in series and understand that in order to perceive light, we have to have a ganglion cell that's activated, and that's because its axons are continuous with the optic nerve, which goes toward the brain. We're going to stop there, and we're going to pick up in the next video. We're going to backtrack and go back to the photoreceptors and see the exact physiology of what's going on with the photoreceptors, because that's very important, and also it's a lot more characterized. We understand it a lot better. So we're going to pick up with that in the next video, and we're also going to look at photobleaching, which we're going to be looking at something called the 11 cis retinal cycle, which is important in the photoreceptor. And then after that's over, we will discuss the general pathway to the brain. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.